Hey everybody, welcome back to the Chronicles of Aguna. Are Arsenal closing in on Gabriel Jesus? It seems that way. Is it time to get excited? Not quite just yet, because there's still some work to be done. But we're hearing multiple reports from multiple outlets at the moment suggesting that Arsenal are getting closer and closer to landing the Manchester City star. Now, he's been right at the top of Arsenal's striker wish list throughout the summer so far. There was a lot of talk about it at the back end of last season as well. And when Gabriel Jesus decided to really turn it on at the back end of the Premier League campaign, people were doubting whether Arsenal would be able to get this deal over the line, whether the player would be interested in a move to Arsenal. Now, I'm not counting my chickens before they've hatched because I am well aware that there are still a number of things that could go wrong and that they still could still fall apart. But all of the noises we are hearing with regards to this are positive at the moment. So let's break it down for you a little bit. What exactly is going on. So according uh, to Ben Jacobs yesterday when speaking on the football terrace, Arsenal have agreed personal terms with the player. Now, I've seen a few different figures being banded about. Some people are saying it's about £220,000 a week. Others are saying it's more like £240,000 a week. But that's kind of neither here nor there for us as fans. What seems um, encouraging is that Gabriel Jesus is A, willing, but Arsenal B, are willing to to go out there, go out on a limb and offer the player a very, very competitive salary. Now, when you look at where Manchester City are, the success they've had in recent seasons, the fact that Gabriel Jesus has already lifted the Premier League title, the Premier League trophy, I beg your pardon, four times at the Etihad, we were going to need to show him some love and we were going to need to convince him that this is the right place for him. And you have to do that when you can't do it based on what you're doing on the pitch and when you can't do it based on Champions League status, for example, or you're not right at the top of the table to show him that you can compete for the biggest trophies at this moment in time, you have to do it in another way. And you have to show trust and you have to show love and faith through the medium of money, which is not ideal. Look, you, you don't always want to uh, sort of be throwing money at everybody. But I think the fact that Arsenal are clearly willing to spend around about £50 million to get this deal done for a player who's out of contract next summer and are then on top of that offering him a very, very competitive salary will make Gabriel Jesus feel the love. It will make him feel like this is the right place. And at the very, very least, he is definitely wanted here. And I think that's so, so important. Add to that the Mikel Arteta factor, the existing relationship that the two have, uh, the fact that they appear to be singing from the same hymn sheet and some information that I got earlier on today from Graham Bailey, 90 Men's Transfer King, uh, is that one of the big things here and one of the reasons that Gabriel Jesus is keen on Arsenal above anybody else is because of that willingness to trust him with the centre-forward role. Now, this kind of contradicts what Tim Vickery was saying earlier in the week and what some other people have been saying around the fact that Jesus maybe prefers to play from the right. I don't think that's the case. I think when you look at that Brazilian squad and you look at the competition they have in those wide areas, I think Gabriel Jesus will be eyeing up that centre forward position going into the World Cup. And if he can join Arsenal, play there, be the focal point of the attack, hit the ground running, um, I think he stands a great chance of being Brazil's main man going into the competition. That's ultimately, I think, what he wants. Um so that is said to be really, really key in the negotiations. Uh, I've talked a little bit about the uh, the wages, 220 to 240 grand is what we're hearing. Uh, but the other thing that we, we keep hearing from multiple outlets, Fabrizio Romano, one of them, is that there's still a few details that need resolving. Uh, others are saying that this is a matter of, it, uh, of when, sorry, rather than if, which is obviously encouraging to hear. But I understand that there's still some uh, issues that need to be ironed out with regards to the intermediaries involved in this deal. But it is progressing slower than we'd like as Arsenal fans. We'd all like this deal to be done. We'd all like that announcement to come ASAP. But you've also got to consider that Gabriel Jesus has just become a dad a matter of days ago. And that could have potentially delayed things as well. Now, there are noises coming out that Spurs were interested in Gabriel Jesus and, and people were sort of panicking a few days ago as to whether or not this could be a problem for us. We'd heard that Chelsea were interested as well. I wouldn't completely rule Chelsea out, but it seems that Tottenham have been briefing people uh, to the fact that they are out of the race for Gabriel Jesus. Now, if you believe goal in Brazil, they say that Je uh, Jesus has rejected the opportunity to join Spurs because he'd prefer to work for Mikel Arteta. He'd prefer to play 
under Mikel Arteta. And that same outlet are reporting that it's the same with Rafinha, that he is interested in a move to Arsenal if he can't have that Barcelona move over Tottenham because he wants to work with Mikel Arteta because he's been impressed by the job he's done so far, by the project he is building. And it goes to show that even without much experience, even uh, without having achieved an awful lot in the game, Mikel Arteta is at the very least making the right impression on people right throughout the footballing world. Kind of explains as well why Arsenal might have felt that they could go in with such a low bid for Rafinha at the outset. Now, some were concerned that maybe that would get Leeds' his backup. Maybe it could damage our chances of potentially bringing the player in. But it seems as though Arsenal might have known something that we don't. And that's that Rafinha, if he can't go to Barcelona, would actually be quite open and willing to join Arsenal Football Club. Would Arsenal have gone as far as making the bid? We spoke about this with Tom Canton yesterday on the show. If they weren't sure uh, that Rafinha was interested, I don't think they would have. So we're hearing encouraging noises around both of these two players at the moment. I think the Rafinha one's going to drag. I think that one's one that's probably going to go on for a few more weeks. I think because there is more competition for Rafinha. I think with Jesus, his mind's been made up. I think Arsenal willing, as I say, to pay around about £50 million for a player whose contract is running out rapidly. And uh, and given the salary that they appear to have offered him, I think all of those factors, plus the Mikel Arteta factor, have really, uh, really sort of um, convinced Gabriel Jesus that this is the place to go. So some are saying that this will be completed within the next seven to ten days officially, um, which isn't really a long time when you think about it. We've still got plenty of time before the season kicks off. But to a fan who's searching desperately for updates every single day, it's going to feel like an age. So brace yourselves, strap yourselves in. This is moving and it is moving in the right direction. Still potentially could break down. We've seen many a uh, uh, high profile transfers over the years break down at the final stages. We're hearing today that Newcastle have pulled the plug on their move for Hugo Eketike, a player that they've been linked with for what seems like an age now. So these things do happen. Deals can fall apart. But when you listen to all the noises, when you study all of the reports, when you try and read a little bit in between the lines as well, when you think about how confident and positive Edu seemed in that interview that he gave to the Arsenal website just a matter of days ago, you start to feel like there's reason to prepare for excitement, I guess. But fingers crossed. Look, um, as I say, I, I am wary of getting carried away, but I do feel like this is moving in the right direction, like Arsenal are closing in on their man. And what a welcomed addition uh, Gabriel Jesus would be to that Arsenal attack. For me, um, you know, Darwin Nunez was up there in terms of players that I'd have liked to have seen come to the club. The minute Liverpool entered the race, I think that became uh, almost impossible. So now we're in a position where we're looking uh, to what most people would say is their first choice. I mean, my personal preference was Nunez because of the, the physicality and the other things that he brings to the team. But he's closely followed by Gabriel Jesus, who isn't the biggest man in the world and doesn't offer a lot of those physical attributes, but offers other things in terms of his link-up play, in terms of a tighter touch. I think he's got a much tighter touch than Darwin Nunez. I think he's got threat in behind. I think he'll bring the best out of the players around him. And I think in Mikel Arteta's team and in Mikel Arteta's system, that is so so key. Don't forget to hit the like button. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel if you're new. Let me know your thoughts on Gabriel Jesus in the comments section below. I'll be back very, very soon with more Arsenal content. I'm on my way to TalkSport now, uh, so I'll probably drop a video or two from that show a little bit later on today. I'll catch you all next time. Goodbye.